What's going on, everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com, and today we're going to start a brand new dynasty in NCAA Football 06. Now, those of you who watched my previous Temple Dynasty video, I had a lot of technical issues via the next mod. It was just glitching out on me. I was losing visuals. It forced me to have corrupted files. It was just a big mess, and hopefully the next guys can fix that later on. But this is forcing me to go back to the base game, which I have no problem with. As you can see here, here is Reggie Bush, 2005. I'm using the uh, uh, 05 uh, rosters, and I'm just really excited about this. I'm not even using that transfer mod that I was using what, a couple of dynasties ago. Now, I'm still using the next texture pack. That's really cool. It doesn't affect gameplay. It just pretties everything up. And I'm also using my master playbook file with all the new plays and such. Other than that... This is 06 base, which again, I'm just really excited about. And I hope you are too. Now we have already started the dynasty. This is the preseason video. So let's go straight to coach options. And let's talk about the team we're gonna roll with. I am the new head coach at Arizona. I picked a power five school because a couple things. One, I we get tougher games out of the gate, tougher schedule, and I just got tired of doing the whole group of five uh, team thing. Uh, there's not a lot of talent discrepancy in that league compared to here. It's just going to be a lot tougher going up against tougher teams a whole lot more often. And I'm just really excited to be in the Pac-10 for the first time in years. I think my Washington State Dynasty was the last one I used in this particular conference. I'm, I'm excited to get back. I've never ran a dynasty with Arizona. It's going to be tough recruiting-wise, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And what I'm going to do, we're going to run a pro-style offense. We're going to get into that at the end of the video. And here we are with the coach strategy. This is all sim purposes. Now, offensive type, that is for recruiting in terms of you got to have a minimum of two fullbacks, two tight, three tight ends, so on and so forth. We're still going to go with a 4-3 defense. And again, we're going to talk about that towards the end of the video, some of the new things I want to do there. Always make sure you have recruiting assistance and discipline assistance turned off, which I do because I want full control over that. And let's go ahead and look at the report card. Here's what they expect of us. Now, I plan on staying with Arizona for as long as I can. I like the idea of trying to win three national titles if I can. I like that idea. It's been a long time since I've done three. I've done back-to-backs in the past, and then I've moved on. But let's see if we can try to go for three before we decide what to do after that. I may stick with this file. I may something do something fresh. Who knows what's going to happen? Right now, I'm focused on Arizona. But as you can see here in the contract info, they want us to beat Arizona, and we're going to have us beat Texas. And we are in year one of three, of course. Let's go over to the schedule, by the way, which I've already put together. This is an A-plus schedule, and I like the idea of putting nothing but Power 5 schools on here. Starting off, we're going to head over to Austin, Texas to take on the Longhorns. That should be a lot of fun. And now this is Vince Young. It's going to be a really tough one. Then we got Northwestern, Big Ten. Then we got at number 23, Pitt. It's been a while since I played there. I don't remember the last time I did. And they got some really cool uniforms, the updated blue and yellow. I really like that look. Then you're headed to the heart of the conference schedule. At Cal, at number one USC, then Stanford, Oregon, at Oregon State, UCLA, Washington. I got an open date. Then we're going to end the season with our arch rival, number 19, Arizona State. So I'm going to have an A plus schedule every single season. We're going to play nothing but power of five schools, and we'll just see what happens from that. So I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a really cool schedule. Let's go to rest your players. I've already done this. Now, you look, we have a total of 69 players. We have 16 seniors, so our first recruiting class is going to be a pretty decent size. If you think about it, you got 70 max players on a team. You divide that by four. That gives you roughly, you know, 16 to 17 players per class if you want to try to even that out. So it'll be a standard size class. Starting at quarterback. Now, again, we're going to run a pro-style offense, and we got Richard Kovacek. I hope I said that correctly. He's going to be our starter, Austin Red shirt wise, I am going to register this true freshman, Willie Tuitama. I hope I said that correctly. We got another but pocket passer. So this offense uh, kind of fits what I want to do schematically, even though we don't have the best talent in the world. Again, our best quarterback, 78 overall. Halfback, our best player offensively is Mike Bell. He's an impact player, red shirt senior. Going to be a stud for us. We're going to focus him on him quite a bit. And his backup is a senior halfback, Gilbert Harris. We're going to do like a one-two punch. 
it's going to be mostly Bale, but we're going to have Harris fill in for Bale when needed. Then we got Henry, a redshirt sophomore. But here are the two guys we're going to redshirt. A freshman and a freshman. Just go ahead and get them ready for the future. We won't need those. I think we'll be fine, at least with these two. I may sprinkle in Henry. We'll just see what happens there. Fullback, we have... We need some fullbacks. Now, I'm going to recruit standard fullbacks, and I'll get into that more with the recruiting side of things. But I'm going to redshirt junior Paul Nichols only because him and Lyman, Lehman, Pedro Lehman is a great name, are the same overall. This one's Nichols is a little bit faster, but this guy's a senior. There's really not a difference between the two in terms of their talent. I'm going to have Lehman start for us. We're going to redshirt Nichols, and I got a senior right here that he's going to move on. Wide receiver, we got a bunch of dudes, 84, 80, then a bunch of dudes in the 70s. I got three guys we're going to redshirt, a sophomore, a freshman, a Thomas, then we got Butler, another sophomore. The rest of these guys, we got five active. That should be enough for what I need to do. If somebody gets hurt, I, I can replace them with a redshirt guy. We'll see what happens. But these three guys are going to be the main cog of the passing attack this season. Vickers, Cendric Steptoe, which is a great name. And then Mike Jefferson. Tight end. Tight ends are going to be a real focus in this offense. It's been a while since I've really focused on this position, that and fullbacks in general. We got Braden, Brandon Bacall, Travis Bale, and Ryan Kilpatrick. 80 overall. That's not bad. Just 72 speed. Can he catch it? A little bit. So these guys aren't world beaters by any means. But I'm not going to redshirt him. He's by far our best tight end. And we got a decent one behind him. Nothing special. Offensive line, we got a senior and a junior. I'm redshirting this guy because we got two or three guys that are about the same. We got one guy that's going to be gone after this year, Brad Britton. So it just made sense for me to redshirt Haas. There's really no difference between the two. I'm okay with that little bit of a sacrifice because we're going to need him next year because our two starters are going to be seniors. Guard, we got a 84 and an 80. Then it gets down pretty low really quick. I had one option to redshirt in this 68 overall freshman of Jordan Lowe. Then we got center. It's a bad situation. Everybody's 68 overall. I went ahead and redshirt a freshman. We got a junior and we got another junior. Just not a very good deal, but we'll deal with it. Hopefully we'll be a recruiting. We're going to run a 4-3 defense. As you can see here, they are set up to run the 4-3. Not a humongous defensive ends. We got a little bit of speed. And now the only one I really was able to do a redshirt was Michael Sheldon. Uh, true freshman. Don't know if he'll ever do much for us. I like his speed. That's good enough. But I had a chance to redshirt Marcus Smith, but we're not going to do that because he's our best guy. Defensive tackle. Uh, we had a one decent option. Yanov Barnett, 6'3", 285, sophomore. I don't think we'll need him this season. I'm going to go ahead and take the chance that we're going to be fine without him. Then you got outside linebacker. We don't have anybody to redshirt here. We Our best player is a senior, and I'm not going to redshirt him. Then you go over to middle linebacker. I had one option, Adrian McCovey, which is a great name, by the way. We're going to redshirt him. All three of these guys are kind of the same, uh, and they're all kind of young, but this gives me a chance to redshirt a guy. And I need some smarts there as well, so uh, we'll see who's going to start there. Cornerback, really didn't have a chance to redshirt anybody. We had one guy we could, but he is our best corner, and this isn't a good situation. 82, then it's a bad drop-off from there. Cornerback is going to be a big priority for us in recruiting. Free safety. This is the strength of our defense. We got a redshirt senior, 93 overall free safety. Really nice. Now, we got a backup. We're going to redshirt Dominic Patrick. We had a chance to either redshirt him or the junior Marcus Hollingsworth. I just redshirted the young guy. I think we'll be fine with a one-two punch in Brooks and Hollingsworth. Then we have strong safety. The other one-two punch in that secondary, another impact player. Notice the free safety doesn't show it. He's an impact player, and Lehman, Lehman Means is an impact guy, 89 overall. We're going to register Brandon Tatum, a freshman. I think we'll be fine without him. We got a decent backup in Michael Johnson. Then we get to kicker. We got an average guy there, redshirt junior, and then we got a senior at punter. We're going to have to recruit that position in the offseason. So that is the roster via red shirting. Let's go over to rosters. Let's go to depth chart. And you can kind of see who's going to start. I'll go through these really quickly. Kovacek is going to be our starting quarterback. Then you have Mike Bell and Harris. They're going to be kind of a one-two punch with Bell taking up most of the load. And uh, Lyman, uh, 80 overall fullback. 
Then you got our wide receivers. I got Vickers on one side, Jefferson at the Z receiver, and we're going to have a slot receiver, a little speedster right here in Cendric Steptoe. Again, just a killer name. Then you got tight end, pretty self-exploratory, what we saw in the red shirting section. I got Britton going to be our starting left tackle because we redshirted Hawes. Then we got Abramo, 80 overall. Then we got a 68. Then an 84, our best lineman in the Lafoto, a senior. And we got another senior right tackle. So we're going to lose a bunch of starters on the offensive line. So big priority there in terms of recruiting. Defensive end, we got Turner and Smith going to start. Those guys interchange quite a bit in terms of their backups and such. You're going to see all four of those guys play. Same at defensive tackle. All four of these guys are going to play at one point or another. Then you got linebackers. Jones, I'm going to have Palmer starting middle linebacker. Only because of his speed. I like that over the 78 overall. He's not as smart. We'll just see how he performs. If he doesn't play well, I can play the older guy. But I'm going to give the freshman a chance. Then right outside linebacker, we got Randy Sims. Corner, probably our biggest weakness on the defense. We got one okay, decent one, and the rest of them just not so much. So we are not going to do any any dime. I mean, I really do dime anyways, but we really don't have the bodies to do it. We'll go nickel probably at the most. Free safety, again, it's obvious. Brooks, and then we got strong safety. Means going to be the other starter as well. And kicker, punter, it's all pretty much the same thing there. Okay, I want to go to rosters and we're going to show you who our captains are you go here we got daryl brooks the free safety and we're going to have mike bale will be our offensive captain none of that really matters per se i always kind of like to point that out let's go over to program standards the bar is a little under half we got a ton of points you always have a bunch to play with in that first season Hopefully we can get a couple guys in trouble that don't play a whole lot and we can bring that bar down so we don't have to use as many points on discipline. Now let's go over to Athlon Sports. Let's go to preseason polls. USA, we're going to have to go up against them every single season. That's going to be tough. You see all these other ones now. I am going to go. I have no clue where we're at. I think we're in the 70s or 80s maybe. Well, you're 68. Okay, they got it says a B minus overall, C plus offense, B minus defense, so on and so forth. Let's go over to Heisman Watch. For those of you who play the base game, it's a standard five. You got Leinert, Peterson, Rush, Vince Young. We're just going to play against him here in the first game. And then we got Ted Ginn Jr. of Ohio State. Preseason All-Americans, I don't think we'll have anybody on here. Hopefully, Postseason, we will. We can look at the second team. I don't think we'll have anybody on there either. We can go over to the Pac-10, the All-Conference. We may have a few guys on here. We got a free safety, Daryl Brooks. I'm guessing the strong safety will be a second team. Look at all these USC players. That is ridiculous. Hopefully we can change some of that. Our uh, right tackle, Tanner Bale, made the second team preseason list, and that is it. Let's go over to Conference Outlook. I think they're going to have us close to dead last. I'm not really sure. They got us eighth, Stanford and Washington. I'll go ahead and tell you, these were the two teams I was going looking at, Stanford and Arizona. I picked Arizona because the recruiting is going to be a little bit tougher. Uh, I was going to add an academic uh, extension to my recruiting rules and whatnot. But I done the Duke Dynasty several months ago. And it would have been the same situation with Stanford. So I figured to change it up and go with Arizona. Washington is dead last, but Washington actually has way more talent than Arizona or Stanford. So that's another reason why I went with Arizona. Toughest places to play. I don't know if we'll ever make this list. It's really hard to get on there. It takes several years to do so. Uh, down the road, maybe we'll look at that. We may get lucky and be on that list. Now I think we're ready to do some recruiting. Let's talk about recruiting. I have updated my recruiting house rules. I got one big one and a few smaller ones, which I'll get into later on. My big house rule, and I really like this, it's very simple, is I can only recruit four and five-star players in my home state. Three and below everywhere else. This kind of forces me to not load up on five stars all over the place, unless I was uh, a team in Texas or California or Georgia. It helps limit my massive recruiting potential, if you will. So you're going to see a bunch of three-star kids on my roster going forward. That should help the CPU a little bit as well. Again, very simple rule. 
and I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing how that's going to work out. And I think that can work for about any type of dynasty out there. Having said all that, let's look at our pipelines, and then we'll start recruiting. I'm assuming Arizona, of course, we're going to look at Thayer. Again, this is the only state I can do four- and five-star kids. So even if California, which is a pipeline, is a pipeline, I could go and only recruit three stars and below. So it's not like it's a super advantage to have California as a pipeline, other than they got a bunch of players to pick from. That is a, an advantage, but I can't go after this kid. And I, I just kind of like that idea. Also, the biggest reason why I'm going this round is because this forces me to focus on being more a developmental coach. I'm going to focus more on training, uh, putting more points into scouting, that type of thing. So we're going to really coach up our players as opposed to just out-talenting everybody. All right, let's go back to California. That's a pipeline. We may have a few more. Uh, New Mexico, maybe. That's right beside us. I know Colorado, Utah, Nevada. I figure Nevada may be a pipeline. I guess it's not. As you could tell, New Mexico, Nevada just do not per, uh, produce a whole lot of talent. That may be it. And McCallum, Texas is probably one. I can keep that as a pipeline. Uh, yes, Texas is a pipeline. But again, just three star and below. Then we can keep on going. Utah, I figure it could have been one. So if you go back like to Utah, I, I like the idea of turning like Utah into one and uh, like New Mexico and Nevada. The problem is they just don't produce a whole lot. So we could go with California, Texas, and of course Arizona. But I want to build up some of those other ones as well. Let's start off with our home state. Now we are a power five school. So I can go after these guys out of the gate, the really good ones. But I'm going to start off here. Now I haven't written down any notes for recruiting. But I do know I need a full bag. I'm going to go after a standard full bag. I kind of have an idea what I want to do there. They're going to be mostly blocking for me, but we're going to get them in the passing game a little as well. Defensive end, that's a big one. Defensive end is another little rule I've used to have the last couple of dynasties is I'm recruiting natural defensive ends. I'm not putting big linebackers that actually are better suited for that position. So that'll make things a little bit harder. And that's our linebacker. Looks like we need some help as well. Other than that, let's just keep looking. Now, halfback. We're kind of okay there. We got three guys. Um, when it comes to halfback, it's I need a, a halfback that's just very dynamic. Uh, they're not going to catch the ball a ton. They can. It's possible. Uh, I just want some really good studs. Now, I like the idea of bigger running backs like this guy right here because we're going to do a lot of between the tackles running and such. So I kind of like this guy. I'm going to go ahead and just put a scholarship on him. Wide receiver, tight end. Let's see. We got a tackle. Three-star, uh, 446.05. I think I may wait. And uh, I'll try to keep that in mind and see if we need him because we may find somebody that's a little bit bigger in terms of how strong he is. Guard, center. Here's a four-star center. This guy is very important for us. As you know, this is probably our biggest weakness on offense. Let's go after him. Defensive tackle, outside linebacker, four-star. Yeah, let's just go after him. As you can tell, he's not as strong as the other guy, but he's much smarter. We'll definitely go after him. And we got a three-star kid, D-plus awareness. Wow, that is just awful. But we do need some help there. For now, I think I may just go after him. Middle linebacker, four-star. Just go ahead and do that. We already got four guys. And here's a three-star. One of them's a little bit stronger. The other one's a little bit smarter. Which one do you go with? That's a toughie. I'm not going to be controlling the middle linebacker much at all. Uh, so smarts of field awareness is probably the way to go. So let's just go put one on him for now. Corner. This guy doesn't fit. I wish he was taller, but he's really good. And this is our biggest weakness on defense. I'm going to go ahead and put a scholarship on him. Might as well. He is like a top 50 player. Free safety. Do we need help there? Uh, not technically. I think we're kind of okay. This guy doesn't really fit. He's what I'm looking for. I like to have some height and some speed. Strong safety, nothing there. So we got about five guys right there. Let's go over to California. And let's go here. Quarterback, halfback. We've already kind of looked at the fullback position. Fullback, nothing there. Wide receiver, we got eight dudes. I'm not going to recruit that position. Tight end, do they have somebody? Here's a three-star tight end. Now, when it comes to tight ends, they are very important in this offense. I need guys who can catch the ball. If they're fast, that will be great. I'm going to go ahead and look at this guy. If he's got good hands, we'll stick with him. So let's just go ahead and pick him. 
Uh, we've already looked at tackle, but I didn't go after that guy. Looks like these guys are much stronger than what we had before. So we have a chance between this guy or this guy. I'm real big on size and strength. And this guy is much bigger and stronger. He's not the smartest, but that's okay. John Smith, I like his height, his weight. Every bit of that looks good. So let's go after him. Guard, very simple. I need the biggest, strongest dudes I can find. And here is a three, a three, and a three. Uh, looks like this guy is the strongest of the bunch. He's got 500 on the bench. 6'5", 335. I need some weight there as well. I'm going to at least go after him. And I'll, honestly, I like this guy as well. <coughs> He's actually a bit, uh, got a little bit bigger squat, or better squat. And I like his size. So let's go we'll put one on him as well. Now we're already down to three. Uh, defensive end, I need speed here. Four, seven, eight's not the fastest for me. We'll move on. Defensive tackle, that's a four star. I'm not going to do it. We've already looked at an outside linebacker here. I'm looking for a really tall corner if possible. I'm not really seeing that here. Guy's 5'11". He's really fast. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we got free safety and a strong safety. A three star kid. 6'2", 208. I kind of like that. Uh, let's go back and look at our roster. What do we have? I already forgot how much talent we actually have there. We can go back to strong safety. If this guy's a senior than an 80. He's going to be gone after another year. Then it's kind of iffy right there. Do I take a chance on that guy? Will When will be the next time he'll play? It may be a sophomore year. I'm not really sure. So let's go back to California. Let's go back to strong safety. And there he is. Biggest thing I don't like, he's very slow. So I'm probably going to just pass on him, although I like his size. And that is it for California. Let's just go ahead. <coughs> Again, so sorry for coughing. I need to get a drink. We're going to might as well have Texas as a pipeline as well. Took a big swig of water there. Texas, uh, we might as well make that a pipeline. But again, it's just all three-star kids. Let's just go here. Quarterback, I'd like to find somebody. Like, here's a three-star pocket passer. 6'2", 218, two, TJ Davis. I'm going to go ahead and scout him. You just never know. Halfback, we're okay there. We got bodies. We got two freshmen, so I'm not really worried about going after any of these guys. Uh, fullback, nobody there. Wide receiver, I'm not worried about tight end. Uh, we've already got what? I had junk. I hit the button. Didn't mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Let's go back to Texas. And this tackle right here. And we've already gone after one. Uh, now he's really small. 6 feet 270. No way. We're going after two guards already. Uh, defensive end. Four seven three. I kind of like the way to get somebody faster. Um, I mean, it may be hard to find some faster dudes, but I know four seven three is just really slow for what I'm needing uh, off the edge. Defense tackle. If I can find a really big dude, that'd be nice. Problem is, the only three starter they got is six two two sixty five. Really small, and he's yeah, that's just not going to work. Four star. Let's say we've already looked at the middle linebackers. Corner. Can we get lucky here? Here's a five eleven, and here's a six one. This guy's not even as strong as this guy. I wish I knew what their jump rating was or their jump uh, attribute. Uh, I don't know. 443. This guy is probably worth at least looking at. I'm going to put one on him. Free safety, we don't really need. And strong safety, we are good there. So we got one spot left. I want to look at what? New Mexico and Colorado. I know they're close to us. Let's go to, was it Utah? How about Utah? They got a little bit of talent. Let's see. They got anybody here. <laughs> Again, I'm so sorry for coughing. <clears throat> I'm over the yard for two straight hours, and I must be getting something. Here's a balanced kid. Oh, he's a four-star. Never mind. Let me look. Wide receiver, 6-1-1. No, we don't need that. Uh, we've already looked here. Did they have a corner? Uh, for, okay, here's what I'm looking for. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I know I'm doing this live, but either way, I don't feel like editing this out. This guy's really small. Uh, but he's 4 6 5. I'll just go ahead and take a chance on him unless this cornerback is really what I need. He's a four star, so we're not going to bother. Okay, we are done with, with recruiting. We filled up all of our 12 scholarships. Let's go over to play week. Let's sim the first week. And then we're going to do our recruiting. We're going to fill out our numbers and whatnot. And then we're going to go over to and look at some offensive and defensive stuff. Let's go over to NC's recruiting. And out of the gate, I always want to look at positive pitches. That's a minus on that kid. That stinks. 
and we're down on his list. So we're probably not going to bother there. Anybody with a positive pitch, I'll go after. I'll take a chance on. Here's a positive one. Tight end Tom Gonzalez. Dang it. C minus hands. He's a pure blocking tight end. I can't do it. He's not what I need. I need guys who can, you know, do some stuff for us just besides block. I don't need another small offensive lineman. So let's go here and look at the quarterback. No. All right. So let's go up to the very top. So not a single positive pitch out of the side of one that just doesn't fit what we're trying to do. The cornerback here, I think it's really smart to go after him. So let's go ahead and put 20 points for now. I'm either going to go after four or five at the most. Outside linebacker, kid out of Arizona, 4-5-2, A awareness. Everybody that is just like a really good idea to go after him. So let's go after Nick Williamson. Then middle linebacker, uh, Micah Davis. <laughs> One, a good friend of mine's named Micah Davis. That's cool. Uh, I think it's worth taking a chance on him. Four-star. I think he's just really talented. We'll do something like that. The center, we can. Negative pitch. I could go after him, but I'm not going to bother. Look at this halfback. 6'4", 211. I love his size. I don't worry that his hands aren't very good. I need him to be a good runner. He looks like he's pretty strong. 38605. That sounds pretty good for a halfback. Uh, we could take a chance on him, but let's just wait first. Let's look at some of these other ones. Here's the defensive end. 465. Uh, I don't know. This is kind of important for us. Let's just go ahead and put 20 on this guy. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. I don't know how hard it's going to be to recruit natural defensive ends, especially what I'm looking for in the offseason, so we'll just go with that. Big old tackle. I kind of want to go after this kid. He really fits what I'm wanting to do. Same with this guard, this other guard, which we'll get to somewhere down the line. You look at, uh, again, this guard right here just it fits exactly what we're wanting. A corner, uh, the 61443. I think I'm not going to bother with that one. Tom Gonzalez, this is the one we were looking at. Problem is C minus hands. And another guard, John Allen, 63328. And last but not least, we got a quarterback. A strength throw accuracy of B. That's not bad. I can work with that. And I need a pocket passer. And I kind of like what I'm seeing there. I can go ahead and probably just take a chance on him. Let's just do that. The rest of these, I think I'm okay with, other than I would really like to go after one of these offensive linemen. I think that's more important, so I have to decide what's not as important. I think going after these three guys is a must. These are all four-star kids in our home state. I want to. This is another reason why I like the four or five only in your home state idea, because you have good storylines. I'll try to remember... Hey, these are local products. Singleton, William Davis, you know, have, you know, I'd, it'd be really cool to have half of my team from the state of Arizona, especially if they're this good. So I think it's smart to go after those three. The defensive end, I think I'm going to wait. I'm going to take a chance and just wait. Even though we need a little bit of help there, I'm going to go ahead and wait. I think it's more pressing to go after offensive linemen. So I'm going to go after that tackle instead. Let's go after John Smith. I think that's a good idea. So we're going to do something like this. And when it comes to this quarterback, I have a bunch of young dudes already. He's not going to play for a while. I think I can find me a quarterback later on. So I actually think it's more important. He's a Texas kid too. Oh, man, this is kind of tough. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and just go after him. Uh, it's either him or the Buchanan kid, one or the other. That's a tough one. I, I'm not really sure what's more important, getting a guard or getting a quarterback. I don't know when this guy's ever going to start, the Davis kid. I don't know if I'm going to end up finding another quarterback that's going to be better than him, and this guy's just going to sit the entire time. It's a lot harder to find offensive linemen of this size. So I'm going to go after this guy instead. I just think that's smart. Go Win it down, offensive, defensive line, which is what we're doing here. So uh, we're going to go after two big offensive linemen and three defensive players. So I think that's a really good setup. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and save this really quickly. We're going to save it. And then we're going to talk about the offense and the defense. We're going to look at the playbook first, and then we're going to go into practice mode, and I want to show you a few different things. And we're going to look at the playbook in total right now. We go over here, go over to rosters, playbooks, go to playbooks, this is the playbook. Now, notice a couple of trends. First thing, there are no shotgun formations. It's all under center. One of the reasons why I want to do this is because it's simply harder 
to run an offense strictly from under center. It just makes sense. You're closer to the defensive line. You're closer to the pressure. It puts more pressure on your offensive line to protect when you got to have more three, five, seven step drops and such. It's just much tougher. And it also fits my pro style offense and what I'm wanting to do. Another thing you'll notice is a lot of ace and weak formations. I picked these for one reason only. Notice the next trend. Ace normal. It's a two by two look. You got, I'll bring my little icon up and I'll show you. You get the two by two look. You got a tight end wide receiver, tight end wide receiver. Put a line down the middle, two on one side, two on the other. A slot, two by two. A spread, two by two. Ace tight, two by two. Ace empty, same thing. Of course, this is all passing. It's not going to matter. And the weak formations. Again, put a line down the middle. You got two on one side, two on the other. Same with weak twin tight end, weak normal, and weak slot. I've done this for one reason and one reason alone, and that is it is very easy to run the ball better if the defensive line and linebackers shift very hard to the right or to the left. They do that in trips and twin sets. But if I'm going to show them nothing but two-by-twos, it is mono and mono when it comes to running the ball. And this is a little bit harder to run the ball, just in simple terms. And it, again, when you see the whole front seven shift to the right, it's just very simple to run to the left, and you're going to probably get a decent gain. Not so much in this offense. So this is going to be even harder. I've never put an offense like this together, but I'm really excited about seeing what it could do. So speaking of, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to exit the dynasty. We're going to go into practice mode. And I'm going to show you some of the concepts I want to work with. And then I'll let you go. It's going to be really neat. We're going to go over to practice mode. We'll go Arizona against Arizona. We will go over to the Arizona. Might as well go in our home stadium. We'll go here. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the running game. Starting off just an ace normal, just for example, the running game is going to be some run concepts you rarely see me call. The big one is going to be halfback read. This is a little similar to halfback slam. Now, for those of you who play on the console, it's the halfback read has got that slanted blocking that is just awful. I don't have that issue now. This is an updated play. But what's cool about halfback read is it feels a whole lot like wide zone. Anybody who watches the NFL a whole lot, the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, he is known for the wide zone run. And this is the closest thing I can get to the wide zone. It's a little slower than slam, but it gets me to the outside. I can cut up the things like that. I just really like the look of it. I'm just curious to see how that's going to work. But it gives me the opportunity to go to the outside if needed or I can cut up just depending on what the defense is doing, okay? To complement wide zone slash halfback read, we're going to throw in a lot of halfback counter. Now, this is another one where I took all of the pulling out just because it didn't work all that great. But this is another slower developing play, but it looks similar to halfback read except you're going in the opposite direction. So instead of going to the right, you'll go the other way, things like this. And I think it's going to complement halfback read very well. So those are going to be the two main plays in the run game. And I think I may end up doing a little bit, and I'll show you here, may end up doing a little halfback draw if I don't forget it. Otherwise, I don't think you're going to see me run slam much unless it's in a formation that doesn't have halfback read. Like a slam or a spread doesn't have halfback read, but I may end up having to use... I uh, slam for that situation. Otherwise, those are going to be the main run concepts. When it comes to the passing game, it's going to be a little bit all over the place, but I'm going to do some newer things. And one thing you don't see me do a whole lot is like curl flats. As we all know, curls are just tougher to throw to. Not impossible, just high risk. We're going to do some of that. Now, before we talk about the curl flats and the drop back stuff, my running game needs a big complement to that, and that is play action. We're going to do a ton of play action in this offense. So you go to a slot, we're going to see you know a lot of PA rollout. We're going to see some other PA deep. Every single one of these formations has some really good stuff in it. From, you know, there's PA rollout. Just some weird ones. And some of these formations I haven't even updated. So you're going to see some real old school default 06 plays 
in here of some sort. So a lot of play action off of halfback read, off of halfback counter. And what's really cool about this playbook before I go into the defense is a lot of the main personnel groups are covered. I kind of wanted that as well, and it just kind of fell into place. This is a 12 personnel look, ace normal, 12 men and one halfback, or one running back and two tight ends. Then you got an 11 personnel and a 10, and a 10. Technically, this is a 10, but we're going to shuffle that inside guy out. We can make it like an 0-1 look. Then you got 22, another 22, then you got 21, then you got 20. So we got a lot of cool things here I'm really excited about of the offense, and I hope you are too. Now, when it comes to the defense, we're going to do something really different. Um, you've seen me run the same five or six play slash concepts on defense for years. I'm just, I'm more of an offensive guy. I'm more interested in fooling around with that side than I am for the defense. But for the defense, I'm doing some more weird things. The first thing I'm going to do is we're going to play a ton more man. So first and second down, I'm going to run man exclusively, which is something you never see me do. Even against passing teams, normally in the past, you would see me do a lot of cover four, a lot of quarters, against passing teams and do a lot of zone blitzes like crash two you see right here i'm just doing a ton of that well not anymore this offense is going to be a lot of man 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 until we get the third along and i may do like cover three but let's talk about the man concepts I, basically it's going to be cover two cover one but we're also going to do some cover zero now this is going to be an impact player focused defense and what i mean by this is for example gold double x notice how you are double teaming the x receiver if the cpu offense has an impact wide receiver on the outside you're going to see me call more of this look what that say what that looks like that is cover zero you never see me call cover zero because cover zero is pretty high risk and whenever I go up against an impact wide receiver and I think they're going to pass I'm going to sprinkle in some of this if we're going up against a quarterback that's a dual threat guy. We're going to do a lot of man spy. Very aggressive defense. Again, first and second down, man, pretty much exclusively. We're still going to do cover ones with some blitzes, cover twos and such. But when it comes to third down and long and such, I want to go to like basic cover three. I still may do cloud. It's still a cover three. I still may do that. But I'm just really excited about the first and second down man stuff, especially double slots. If, for whatever reason, they got two impact guys on the inside, I think I may end up calling more of this. And it's just, again, super aggressive defense. Very different than what I'm used to. Very risky, very unsafe. We're probably going to give up a lot of points in certain areas, a lot of yards. And we're going to see the CPU passing game really take off because we're going to give them some opportunities to throw some good man beaters if they can get the ball off in time. We'll see how that goes. So hopefully you are excited about the dynasty. That's all I really wanted to show you. Of course, this is the preseason video. You're used to the normal stuff at the beginning. But I really wanted to point out what the offense is going to look like and what the defense is going to look like. Just a lot of new things, recruiting, on the field, off the field. I can't wait, and I hope you can too. So um, more than likely, the first game will come out on Monday against Texas. So that should be a whole lot of fun. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.